or until we learn. That's right. And if it is pointed out to you that you're not lining up with the word of God, don't be ashamed about that. Hallelujah. The whole reason why we're here as preachers Thank you, Lord. is to convey the word of God to you so you will understand what it is you're doing wrong. Not to feel condemnatory That's about right. what you're doing wrong or to feel ashamed about not measuring up. That's See, right. here's the measuring stick. None of us meet the mark. See, the concept Hallelujah. is that you think some people meet the mark and that you don't meet the mm. mark. See that unequally situation, yes, unequally yes, yoked situation? Yes, yes. You feel confident that I'm meeting the mark and you're missing the mark. No, it doesn't work that way. We all have what? Sin. Fallen short and sinned, right? Against we all God's have done that right. against yeah. God as far as God is concerned. So as far as I'm concerned, we are all in the same boat. Mm. So don't you feel bad when the word of God comes to you to correct you. I want you to feel happy about the fact that the word of God Hallelujah. cares enough about you to correct your conduct. Amen. Amen. So Thank from now Jesus. on, when you hear the word, don't shroud up. Don't get nervous. Don't get uh, condemnatory. Don't mm. feel ashamed. Just feel glad. That the word of God is arresting your attention so that you can change your behavior. Yes, okay? Lord. Thank unforgiving heart are oftentimes hard to hide even when you have forgiven the offender mm. you might have a tendency to take back that forgiveness just long enough to nurse the wound again mm. or one more time did you really forgive them completely i'm talking about the offender we've been talking about forgiveness for the last three weeks almost a month right whenever we allow ourselves to think about the wound we reopen ourselves only to be wounded again, only to stay living in the past. Let's learn to forgive and to move forward. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus Christ, who took all of our sins upon the cross, upon him, the lashes that he took for us, he forgave. And so let us practice forgiving. Wait a minute. Check out this download. Give it to us, Pastor Kofi. Maybe we're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. We are choosing to forgive after the offense. Mm -hmm. After we assess what the offense has done to us, offense has done to us. Mm -hmm. After we assess how we feel about the offense. Mm -hmm. Even after we assess how we feel about the person who has done the offense. Yeah. But you just said something. Jesus forgave. Yes, he did. But watch this. And I know this is hard for you to comprehend. Because when the download was just coming, I was arguing. Mm. Here it is. When Jesus was on the cross, when he was intermittent in mm. the act of dying, mm. that's when he said, forgive them, Father. For they know not, not what, what they, they do. do. That's right. Now watch this. He didn't wait to after. Mm. They did it. He forgave them while mm. That's good, they Pastor. were doing it. Yes. Think about that for a second. While they were spitting on him. While mm. they struck him in his face several times. When they lashed him with the cat's whip several times. Our God was thinking, Lord, forgive them, mm -hmm. for they know not what they do. Remember when the devil had Jesus on the mount 
and he yes. said, bring yourself down unless you cast your foot against the stone. Yes. He was basically saying, since you are God, call your angels and have them to come and get you. Yeah. So let's understand something. At any given time, when Jesus was being inflicted with that pain, he could have called the angels at that moment yeah, and they would have yeah. come yes. to save him. Yes. Think about it. He healed people. He raised people from the dead. You mean to tell me yes, he, he can't did. get a few uh, offenders off of him? Mm. So that must mean that at the time in which the offense was taking place, Ooh. he was asking God to forgive him. My God. See, even when Jesus, they was you, offending Lord. him, even when they were in the midst of doing it, he was thinking about the big picture. Can you and I do that? Mm. Or do we only have to wait, Pastor, until the offense is finished? And then we decide after we carefully deliberate mm. whether we should forgive them or not. I believe that we can't do it based on what the word says, but it has to start immediately. That's my point. Yeah. Immediately yeah. is yeah. when Jesus yeah. did it. The offense. Yeah. Now, I know you and I have a, 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 a repertoire in which we go about forgiveness. I know that the church has taught us a certain way to forgive. Mm. But what I'm illuminating right now is what your Lord and Savior did. See, I'm illuminating right now the fact that you call yourself a what? Christian. Christian. Yeah. And that means what? Christ-like one. Yeah. Say your name. Let's share. Does that mean the like one? No, it doesn't. It means Christ-like one. Mm. Let's be more specific. Christ is the anointed one. Yes, he is. That's what that means. The anointed one. So we're doing it, Hallelujah. the anointed one, like that one. So when you think about forgiveness from now on, as the offense is taking place, yes, you need Lord. to fixate your mind to just right away, mm. forgive them, right away, as it's happening, forgive them. As somebody says something to offend you, as they're saying it, yeah. you can catch when something's offensive, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before they finish the statement, you already know. Mm -hmm. Before the person finishes their statement, you knew whether it was sarcastic or not, yeah, right? Yeah, or condescending. Be or or condescending yeah. or not, right? Yes. Yeah, so... How about we try to be like Christ, which yes. is forgive them in the midst of the offense. Yeah, yeah. That's just something that was downloaded yeah. by God. Amen? Yeah, amen, amen, amen. amen. Continue, amen. Pastor. Continue. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come Continue. on and give Hallelujah. God a hand clap of praise right Hallelujah. there. Hallelujah. Forgive when the offense Hallelujah. is taking place. Yes, yes. Not just after. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's if you can. Mm, of course we can. Hallelujah. <laughs> So today we're going to share some descriptions of an unforgiving heart. Mm. And this is really a message as we're preparing to take communion today. This is really a message about us being able to self-examine, to identify our own selves. So think about yourself and think about no one else mm. and ask yourself the question, do I show signs of an unforgiving heart? Okay. Or can I identify whether I have an unforgiving heart? So the unforgiving heart is judgmental and condemning. The unforgiving heart is often thinking about mm -hmm. or bringing up in a conversation the past wrongs of the offender. Mm. And so the question that we should ask ourselves is, who do I always talk about in a negative way? Mm. Write it down in your journal and write down this scripture, please. Mm. And thank you. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. 37. Do not judge, do not condemn, forgive, and you will be forgiven. Okay? Mm. We're still identifying the unforgiving heart. Yes. Not the unforgiving heart and heart of others, mm -hmm. our offenders, our trespassers, but we're going to deal with the unforgiving heart of ourselves, the self-examination. The unforgiving heart is judgmental and condemning, always thinking about or bringing up in conversation the past wrongs of the offender. Ask yourself, who do I often talk about in a negative way? Luke chapter 6, verse 37 says, do not judge, do not condemn, forgive, and you will be live chatted, forgiven. Mm -hmm. You got it. The unforgiving heart. 
has no mercy and is always, or maybe I should say often, mm -hmm. rehearsing the reason why Pastor Kofi, the offender, does not deserve mercy. That's true. Ooh, we got to be careful with that. Yeah. And the question that we need to ask ourselves, whose sins do I keep track of? Isn't it amazing we can keep track or record of the sins of others, but do we keep a record of our sins? We shouldn't. As soon as we sin, we should be repenting. Yes. James chapter 2, New Testament, verse 13 reads, Judgment without mercy mm. will be shown to anyone who has, n who has not been merciful or who has no no mercy. Mm. Mercy triumphs over judgment. It sure does. I'm going to read that again. James chapter 2, verse 13. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has been merciful. Absolutely. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes, it does. The unforgiving heart. Again, I'm identifying my heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The unforgiving heart is resentful and envious begrudging or coveting the successes and accomplishments of the offender. It's so important that we identify if we're operating with an unforgiving heart. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, self, who do I envy right now? Yes. Whose success threatens my own happiness? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. Hmm. It reads, love does not envy. It is not it's resentful. Sad. That's right. Still dealing with the unforgiving heart. Are you all identifying if you have an unforgiving heart or not? Oh, you don't have to tell me that. Let it be between you and God, right? Or if you want to share, share so that we can pray, right? Amen. Because sometimes when we think about the offenses that have been done to us, we will carry that unforgiveness for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is bitterness sets in. Mm. And we don't want to be bitter people, but we want to be people who have overcome. And people who can teach and show other people how to apply forgiveness. The unforgiving heart is profane and bitter. Mm. Verbally abusive. And harbors hostility mm. toward, the, toward the offender. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves, who do I curse under my breath every time they come to my mind? Hmm. The scripture is Romans, New Testament, chapter 3, verse 14. And it reads, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Hmm. But thank God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a risen Savior. Yes, we do. And his name is King Jesus. Jesus. He's the Lord of Lords and he's the Lord of hosts. Mama. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Yes, he's he Elohim, is. El Shaddai. He's all sovereign. He's an amazing God. An amazing he is the God. one that we confess our faults to. He's the one that we confess our sins to. He is a deliverer, but yet he's the eternal God. Mm. He is a healer. Hallelujah. He's an amazing God. He's magnificent. He's a miracle working God. He's the one who who has saved us. He's yes, the one he who's is. called us out of darkness he into his that. marvelous light. And because God has mandated, he commands that we forgive, that it is possible for us to do it. We said it a couple of weeks ago. The Lord has not asked. He has not given instructions in his word for us to do or ask us to do anything mm -hmm. that we're not able to do. See, we can do all things. In Christ, through Christ, who strengthens us, mm -hmm. all things, not some, whatever God has called us to do, we're able to do it. We just need to change the mindset. We need to not be conformed to the things of this world, but be transformed, transformed. by the renewing of our mind. We need to think 
in a way that's pure and to think of those things that have a good report. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Why? Because we serve a living true God. He said that those who worship him must worship him in spirit, spirit. and in truth. truth. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Truth. Hallelujah. This Glory. has been a message for us to identify if we have an unforgiving heart. Well, thank God for Jesus who laid down his life for your sins mm -hmm. and for my sins, Hallelujah. for our sins, that we, that we may come to an understanding of why Jesus did what he did. It was so that you and I could have eternal life. Yes. It was so that you and I could have the ministry, which is all of our ministry, and that is the ministry of reconciliation, mm -hmm. that we would win some, that we would reconcile man back to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we begin, hallelujah, mm. to prepare for communion. Amen. As we begin to prepare for communion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. As you're you. gathering your drink and your bread. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to understand something that I feel is pertinent for your understanding. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank and you. And that is, in the church, when you hear a message, there's pressure there. Mm -hmm. There's an unspoken pressure that says you should already be doing what the preacher is preaching about. Mm -hmm. My Lord, help us, Jesus. Think about it for a second. When you hear sermons, don't you feel convicted when you are not doing what the preacher is conveying? Or when you feel the Spirit of God arrest your attention oh, thank you, Jesus. and cause you to deal with the fact that you don't line up with the word of God. Mm. But let me free you for a second. Let me free you from the religious bondage mm. of pretending that you already had it. You know how That's you don't say amen sometimes or you don't look around because you know that it's for you mm. and you feel that pressure of all eyes on you. Let's identify something here. The Bible says Thank you, Jesus. that faith cometh by hearing yes. and hearing by the word of God. Yes, amen. But how can they hear the word of God if they don't have a preacher? Yeah. And how can he or she preach unless she has been sent? That's right. My concept is this, ILM. We don't know until we learn. That's right. And if it is pointed out to you that you're not lining up with the word of God, don't be ashamed about that. Hallelujah. The whole reason why we're here as preachers Thank you, Lord. is to convey the word of God to you so you will understand what it is you're doing wrong. Not to feel condemnatory That's right. about what you're doing wrong or to feel ashamed about not measuring up. That's See, right. here's the measuring stick. None of us meet the mark. See, the concept Hallelujah. is that you think some people meet the mark and that you don't meet the mm. mark. See that unequally situation, yes, unequally yes, yoked situation? Yes, yes. You feel confident that I'm meeting the mark and you're missing the mark. No, it doesn't work that way. We all have what? Sin. Fallen short and sin, right? Against we all God's have done that right. against yeah. God as far as God is concerned. So as far as I'm concerned, we are all in the same boat. Mm. So don't you feel bad when the word of God comes to you to correct you. I want you to feel happy about the fact that the word of God Hallelujah. cares enough about you to correct your conduct. Amen. Amen. So Thank from now on, when you hear the word, don't shroud up. Don't get nervous. Don't get uh, condemnatory. Don't mm. feel ashamed. Just feel glad that the word of God is arresting your attention so that you can change your behavior. Yes, okay? Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so right now, the Lord was pointing out to you and I that we might have an unforgiving heart. Mm. There just might be some people that even though we got taught these messages lately about forgiveness, that we still might not have completely forgiving them in our heart. Mm. So the Lord laid it on our hearts to deal with the unforgiving heart. Yes. To let you know some signs of a heart that's still holding on. Yeah. See? A heart that's still holding on to the offenses that were done My against Lord, help it. Us, Jesus. So to this yes. day right here, to, to this point that we are right now, in this message right now, Thank you. the Lord has arrested our attention so that we 
Thank you. you and I could repent about our unforgiving heart yes. before we take communion. Yes. How about that? Isn't that awesome? Yes, that you is. don't have to take communion and bring condemnation on yourself because you are harboring unforgiveness for someone. Yes. But instead, you get to celebrate the Lord's death with us. Celebrate meaning the fact that he died for you and I to cause us to be free. Because his blood was shed, there's remission for our sins. Yes. Because his body was broken, Hallelujah. we have healing for our bodies. I'll say that again. Hallelujah. His blood was shed, which brings remission for our sins. Thank you, Lord. Which cuts us short from the judgment of God. Thank you, And Jesus. then his broken body was presented so that you and I could have healing over our circumstances. Hallelujah. Healing in our physical body. Healing over our emotions. Thank healing you. over our mind. See, the Lord Jesus Thank Christ you, Jesus. set you and I up for victory when he died on the cross yes. for us. And remember what we said earlier. He did it, and while he was doing it, he asked for forgiveness on the behalf yes. of those who were trying to behead, crucify, and kill him. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? And so this morning, as we are before each other and we're getting ready for communion, what I want you to do is take an opportunity and I want you to pray to your God you. in reflection of your behavior lately and ask yourself, or ask God rather, if your behavior is needing of improvement. And if it's needing of improvement, period, improve, but especially in the area of unforgiveness. Yes. Amen? Yes. So Amen. let's take a moment right now. Ask God to show us where we are. And then let us repent so we'll be ready to take our communion. Okay? Yes. Let, us, yes. let us think right now. Get quiet before the Lord right now. What is it that you did this week that you need to ask for forgiveness for? Okay, now ask for it. The Bible says he remembers your sins no more. Yes. And so right now, accept God's forgiveness in your life. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel it? Thank you, Jesus. Take another second. All right. So let's get ready to take communion because the Lord has forgiven mm. us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, And you Lord. have made up in your mind to do better. So what better time to do communion than now? Yeah, let's get into it. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And what I want to point out about him taking bread and preparing to have supper with his disciples. Remember I said to you that Jesus forgave them when he was on the cross? Yes. Watch this for a second. When Jesus was talking to Peter, when they were getting ready to round him up to crucify him. He said to Peter, you will deny me three times. I submit to you that when he was speaking to Peter saying, you will deny me three times that he had already chosen to forgive Peter for the three offenses. Mm. I submit to you that when he was breaking bread with his disciples, I submit to you that he knew that Judas was the one that was going to betray him while he was at the table That's passing true. the wine and the bread to Judas. He knew Judas was going to be the one to seal his fate. Mm, hallelujah. And still he went through with it without even talking to Judas about what he was about to do. Now, if that's not a heart to forgive, then what is? So let you and I right now, as we have already examined ourselves, let us take communion with that God in mind, with the fact that Jesus himself forgave in the midst of the offense. Amen? Amen. Amen. On the night Amen. that Jesus was betrayed, Thank he you, took Lord. bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he said, take, eat, for this is my body that will be broken. As often as you do this communion, as often as you eat it, think of me 
and my broken body for your healing. Let us take and eat. Glory for your Hallelujah. broken body, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's for our healing. Amen. Yes. Likewise, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks for it, he said, take it, this drink. For this represents the new covenant that my blood will shed for you. As often as you drink this, as you celebrate what happened to me, do this in remembrance of what I did for you. Let us drink. Hallelujah. 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 How Hallelujah. you feel? Huh? How you feel this Hallelujah. morning? Has the Lord That's delivered you? Has the Lord set you free? And has the Lord forgiven you? Well, if that's true, why don't you follow his example and stop having an unforgiving heart and choose to forgive 70 times 7? Let your 490 ring out right now. And you think of every bunt, everyone that has offended you, and you release them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Release Hallelujah. them right now in the name of Jesus and go this day yes. forward and accept God's forgiveness for your sin yes. and accept his grace and his mercy, which will follow you all today. Hallelujah. I want you to be blessed, ILM. Yes. We really appreciate your attendance with us every Sunday. And we look forward to, yeah, every time you sit on this broadcast with us, we praise God for your attendance and are marveled by your concentration that you give to the Lord. Yeah. We are going to make that commitment to continue to bring the strong messages that we have and to even increase those messages as it relates to the strength that you need to get by, the answers that you need. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to keep doing it because ILM loves, loves you. you. But more importantly, God loves you. Peace. We'll see you this week. Blessings. God bless you.